being a scientist is something that you are by nature, really more than you are by profession. So the best scientists are driven by curiosity, first and foremost. But curiosity isn't really enough. So I think it's important to take that naive, native curiosity that the that, that children have, that we all have. But to be a good scientist, I think it's really most necessary to have a very incisive, analytical mind. Uh, to always be asking questions and, and trying to understand how things work. But really, uh, in terms of the day-to-day -day of being a scientist, probably some of the most important skills are persistence and resilience. We're interested in how the brain controls coordinated movement. So it's obvious when we think about elite athletes like gymnasts that people are capable of remarkable feats of coordination. But these same kinds of problems of how to keep our bodies balanced, how to move different parts of the body relative to each other in a way that we're able to remain stable and also interact effectively with the world around us is something that we do all the time. So we're interested in how different parts of the brain work together to control these movements. And this requires coordination across different parts of the body. And it's also something that requires learning. We focus on a particular part of the brain called the cerebellum, which is known to be important for generating movements that require coordination across different parts of the body and also movements that are learned. And one of the advantages that the cerebellum presents is that it also consists of neurons that are organized in a very stereotypical circuit that is conserved throughout the different regions of the cerebellum and also across species. We use mice because mice have a cerebellum that's very similar to the cerebellum of humans. And it also um, allows us to use genetic tools to measure and manipulate activity in specific populations of neurons. And we also use mice because they're very small and they give us the ability to measure movements of different parts of the body with very high spatiotemporal resolution in a way that um, wouldn't be possible to measure the full range of movement of larger animals, for example. So there's been something of a disconnect where, uh, in neuroscience, we're able to measure and control activity in neurons on millisecond timescales, but the measurements of the behavior have generally been much coarser. So we built this local mouse system in order to allow us to measure the movements of different parts of the body also with millisecond timing um, and millimeter precision. It's a corridor that the mouse walks along with a mirror underneath with a single high-speed camera off to the side. Uh, then we applied a machine learning algorithm that allows us to identify the paws and the nose and the tail of the mouse in an automatic way so that we can collect lots and lots of data. Everything we do in the lab is a huge team effort and particularly with developing the local mouse technology, we really drew on the expertise of a number of different people within the lab. So we have engineers and biologists, neuroscientists all working together. I think this is one of the biggest challenges of neuroscience actually, is that it's highly interdisciplinary. So we need people who are very skilled with biology, with um, molecular biology expressing molecules in, in different kinds of cells. Um, we need people who are experts in genetics that can help us work out the right mouse lines to be using. Uh, we need engineers to help us build things. Of course, ultimately, we're interested in the electrical signals generated by neurons. So it's really um, every, every aspect of science that you can imagine really comes together in neuroscience, I think, in a unique way.